Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel called Shermio and in this demonstration I'm going to walk you through the example of how you can actually set up the cluster autoscaler in your EKS cluster in AWS and how the cluster autoscaler will benefit uh, for your company as well as for your workloads which is running across the different regions as well as inside your EKS. So, uh, as you can see on my screen itself, that I already have up and running the Kubernetes uh, version 1.27, uh, which is supported by at the moment, at the recording time of this video on the Amazon EKS, and hopefully in future, uh, the new versions will be pushed and be able to roll it out those upgrades into our existing cluster. But for now, we are on the latest version, which is 1.26. And you can also see the workload, the number of ports I have, it's 15, which is running some of the uh, my test deployment. This is my test cluster. So don't worry about if you see some of the things are not following the best practices or are not configured properly secured, because this is just a test cluster in a test account. Uh, it's nothing is actually using for any of the staging pre-production or production workloads to demonstrate here at all. Right. So what we're going to do here now, it's like if the first thing it's very important uh, to configure the cube config in our terminal. And in order to do that, we need to actually run the command called AWS EKS update cube config. And that command itself will going to configure your uh, cube configurations so that you can connect and able to run the cube CTL uh, command lock command to on against your EKS cluster, which is sitting in some remote server in US East 2 region. The reason I'm passing the region as well, because I have configured my IAM uh, user in a different uh, region versus the region where my EKS cluster is running. And if I don't provide it my region, then it uh, the the I'm user is by default looked in the different regions such as US each one or Sydney region where I have configured my I'm user or a role. So depending upon where are you trying to access the resources, make sure you're passing the regions information as well. And if you're just going to run this command, it will able to configure your cube config and make sure you have the cube CTL already installed. Uh, you can in, uh, simply follow the installation guide from the uh, Kubernetes documentation itself, how to install the cube CTL, which is the cube Kubernetes command line tool. And that, as in, having said that, because now I have able to already authenticate and uh, I have already updated my cube config against my EKS cluster, which is running in the US East 2 Ohio. Now I'm actually just uh, trying to get the ports information, which is running in the default namespace when you just type the cube CTL get ports. In order, and if I just type the default itself, and then you will see the same output as well, because it's just a, by default, the Kubernetes kubectl get ports always looked in the default namespace. Similarly, if you wanted to check against different uh, namespaces, you can either provide it that namespace, or you can actually, if you want to list it across the whole uh, namespaces, then you can just uh, type capital A. And you can see here, it's showing you about the different namespaces where some of the uh, my of the parts or the deployments you can say uh, the workload is actually been running but you can see here clearly that i have the code dns and a csi controller it's installed and running uh, but none of them is actually there is no cluster autoscaler is there right now before i actually jump into uh, start deploying and configuring the cluster autoscaler it's very important to understand what is a cluster autoscaler and what exactly you do so cluster autoscaler by name itself is clearing enough that it's autoscaling something, right? What is it autoscale? It's actually uh, taking care of your worker nodes, which is the Kubernetes worker nodes, right? So cluster autoscaler require to have certain level of permission and those permissions come from your EC2 autoscaling groups, which actually manage your ECS, uh, EC2 uh, EKS cluster uh, worker node. So basically the cluster autoscaler will actually going to look for your workloads where your ports are actually being currently trying to deploy and depending upon if those ports are able to deploy or they require to be rescheduled 
or they don't have enough capacity on your port uh, CPU or memory onto that node, then the cluster autoscaler, depending upon if you have provided a more uh, different capacity to add new number of uh, EC2 servers into that, into that your managed node group, then it will automatically add it on your behalf. The benefit itself is very clear, like if you're running an e-commerce website where you're having a shopping sale going on and you want it to handle a hundred thousands of customers per click on, on an each product and you want it to scale horizontally for your website so that it does not impact the customer experience, you always would like to have something like this in place so that it can handle. We will, and some of you may be arguing as well why I'm not talking about the Carpenter right now. The Carpenter is another one which is uh, uh, do the auto scaling as well. And I thought I will start from the traditional, which is the cluster auto scaler. And in the upcoming video, I'm gonna actually show the transition of moving from cluster auto scaler to the Carpenter itself. So, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have now a little understanding about the cluster autoscaler itself of adjusting your number of EC2 nodes in your cluster in case if the port fails or not able to reschedule re on the existing node. And here you can see that it's a port, it's a sitting in a pending state due to insufficient resources of your CPU or a memory and then it's trying to schedule to the different node based on the autoscaling group. Now, in an EKS cluster itself, it's required to have everything deployed in the unmanaged node groups or in the managed node groups, unless we're going into the Fargate side. So if you're having a managed or unmanaged node groups, you are a part of some node groups where your EC2 nodes are running. Now, in order to see what type of a node group you have in your cluster, it's very important to first type out, and you can clearly see by running the command called EC2 EKCTL, which is another command line tool to get the information about your node groups and other to configure your whole cluster from scratch. I have already created one video in the past about explaining about how you can create a different managed or unmanaged node groups and also put them in a different regions for high availability zones and also uh, how you can actually put them in on a spot instances to reduce down your cost as well if you're running for a non-production workload. And here you can see my type of the node group I'm using is a managed node group and it's the node group type. Name is the NG12A web. It's just a test cluster. I don't have to worry about anything much. Just please bear in mind that the EKS cluster in Amazon Web Services itself can cost you a couple of hundred bucks. So please make sure that you are monitoring the cost of your cluster itself as well when you're following or trying to create or doing any sort of testing. Uh, so please be, please be bare amount of uh, keeping in mind about that. All right, so now we can see we already have a cluster. I have already showed you guys that we have already up and running certain workloads, but now I like to have the cluster autoscaler install itself. Now in order to install the cluster autoscaler itself, the one of the basic requirement we have minimum to have is the OIDC provider to be installed. What is an OIDC provider itself? The OIDC provider, it's the provider which is uh, the issuer for your to which is using the AWS identity and access management roles for your service account. So if you don't have the OIDC provider set up for your cluster, you will not able to create your uh, service account, which is required to map it up your IAM policy to that role. And so it's very important to make sure that you first identify and check that you have the OIDC identity provider created in your cluster. And how do you do that? Okay, it's a very simple thing. So first thing first, make sure you are exporting your profile if you're using an IAM role uh, and if and also the region. So I already exported my profile and I'm just exporting my region now, which is US East 2. So what this has helped me out is that in this terminal, now my whole resources, which I'm gonna make the query against in AWS will going to look into this region specifically. So I don't have to add the flag called dash dash region equal to us dash east to which i was doing earlier and here i just have to provide it my like this 
command and also I forget to mention so to make the life easier of you guys as well I have actually created the one of the repository called Inf infra public under the shermio it's an open public repository anyone can contribute and here I'm just providing the documentation as well as the Kubernetes manifest which we'll be using to create those cluster autoscaler right so now if I just run this command and here we will just gonna go and change replace the cluster name which is shermio eks cluster and what this command is doing here itself is like firstly you are setting up a variable called cluster underscore name and mapping it up to your name of the cluster and then you are actually running the aws uh, eks command to describe the cluster which is the one which we the variable which we defined above and then i'm query does the identity oidc issuer exist and i'm actually getting the id for that oidc provider once if i run that command if after running this command then i have to determine so what we're going to do now we will going to actually try to determine within your cluster id it's already there or not and what i'm doing here is i'm running the aws im to list the open id connect providers and here i'm just getting the output which is stored in this oidc variable if it does exist if this command returns you some strings then you are all good you already have the oidc setup but if you received an empty string or you don't receive any output in it and you see a blank that means you never didn't have the oidc setup in that case what you have to do you simply have to run this ekctl utils associate the im oidc provider against your cluster name and then approve this command will actually create the OIDC identity provider for your EKS cluster and then you can actually proceed forward. So I can see that I already have the uh, OIDC setup so I don't have to worry about. And now in order to the cluster autoscaler to create itself, I need to create an IAM policy for the service account. That service account will actually allow the cluster autoscaler pod to interact with the autoscaling group because the autoscaling group itself will be responsible for provisioning a new EC2 nodes for me, right? So it's very important we are having the setting the right resources and the right principle or and the, you can say the right permission policy for my IAM. So this is a policy. I have also provided this policy here itself and similarly what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna try to run. I never actually run this command before, so I'm actually going to double check those these things exist here itself. And what I'm doing here, it's uh, I'm actually just running the AWS create policy, and then I'm just providing the policy name. So I'm just gonna change demo because it's just a demonstration. And then I'm just providing the path of where my this file exists. This is now changed to infra public. And under the infra public, I have a AWS. I'll just double check. AWS cluster autoscaler, that's correct. And then I have the policy CMIM policy. If I run this command and hopefully if everything goes, put it correctly. So voila, it's a, I have created the IAM policy, which is called Kubernetes cluster autoscaler autoscaling group policy demo. And we can actually confirm this policy into the IAM itself in the console. So I'm just going to the IAM management console and I'm just going to go to the policies now and I'm actually going to search that policy now and we can see that policy has been created and we can see it's the same policy which is provided here so now I have created the policy that policy will be going to be for the service account that will be using by the cluster auto scaler for interacting with the auto auto scaling group right now I have to create a I am role that I am role uh, will be for the cluster autoscaler service account 
uh, in the cube name system. So to, in order to do that, what I have to do, firstly, I have to export my AWS account ID. So I'm actually firstly copy the command and I'm gonna go up to the here and I'm just gonna replace this parameter with my account ID. How do you find your account ID? Simply you go to your uh, AWS console and simply copy the account ID from here. Hopefully the account ID has been copied. And here what I'm running is I'm just running an I'm service account providing the name of uh, for the service account and the namespace where you like to use the reason why we're using a cube namespace system because uh, the cluster auto scaler if you actually try to download the manifest uh, from the github itself which is the op official open uh, source for you to configure they are actually configured in the cube namespace system so if you want to modify it in a different namespace yes you can all you have to do firstly find out your cloud provider so in our case it's aws and here you need to go to the example depending upon what sort of a cluster auto scaler you're trying to deploy like auto discovery or multi uh, auto scaling group or single auto scaling group so let's say auto discovery and you have to replace all these namespaces with your custom namespace where, where you like to deploy so that's the only thing which is the requirement for you to modify it in your own manifest if you wanted to deploy it in a different namespace right okay so coming back to here what we were going to do and so you just provided your namespace and then you provided your cluster so i'm just gonna change the cluster name to as well which is the shermio eks cluster and now here i am going to provide my policy remember my policy is actually called kubernetes cluster autoscaler esg policy demo so that's my policy and i'm gonna replace that to the policy and uh, it's already there but you can also find the i think the air and you can also find here itself for that policy so this is the policy and this is the air and for that policy so either you can just copy from here itself or you simply just modify it here and then you just approving and overriding existing service account means it's like if there is any service account created in the past with the name cluster auto scaler will be modified so, and I'm also going to change uh, so that I can later on trace what I created that service account for. So I'm just adding the cluster auto scaler demo. If everything's provided correctly in a right manner, then hopefully it will create the service account and we can see that service account is actually in the way to create. And once the service account is created, we can see we will see it's a, going to be completed output but as i mentioned why we need to do that that's very important to uh, note about firstly we have created the i'm policy the policy will give an i'm role uh, in the that i'm role we are attaching that policy that i'm role will be actually using by the cluster order scaler service account in the cube's name system so that it can actually able to scale uh, and adjust our easy to work node. And if we modified this permission for a policy or and this is the minimum policy you require. So if you try to change something, it may be to chances it can broke and it's in the cluster order scale and not able to function properly. So let's we can see the cluster uh, the service account has been created under the uh, cube system namespace with the cluster order scaler demo. So if I just type kubectl get service account first i'm just typing in the default namespace and you will see there is two service accounts has been created but now i'm interested in looking at the service account in the cube system namespace so here you can see there is a bunch of uh, service account exists so what i'm going to do actually i'm just going to try to grab the command and i'm actually going to look for this service account only so if i just remove here the cube system and if that service account exists, which should be, then it we can see also the age is 67 seconds when this cluster autoscaler demo was created. So let's also actually try to, uh, you know, like we already know that service account is created. Uh, we can, you can try to describe that service account. And then what we can do, we can copy that service account 
providing and then we typing into the cube system namespace now if on describing we can clearly see that service account is actually using the annotations for the the i am role which we just created uh, which will be actually added as an add-on i am service role and if we're going to open that role itself it's actually contained this policy which we just provided above and that policy will grant the uh, the cluster order scaler to actually adjust and scale up your work worker nodes or you can say the ec2 nodes now you can also uh, one thing i will also like to highlight here like uh, if you always struggle with uh, having remembering all this command uh, which i'm typing here one of the great tool which i use is called the gate lens it is a pretty awesome tool which you can actually use to see all the information in a graphical user interface so i have already created my different eks cluster itself and you can see here i'm actually able to list all my namespaces and i can see the same information of uh, which i try to see so if i just go to the cube system namespace and i actually paste the information for cluster order scaler i can actually able to find out and i can see the same information itself and if i need to modify any of the information i can just simply go here and try to modify it as well and similarly if i'm actually interested in modifying any of my deployment for example i'm interested in modifying the queue uh, code in this modification so i can actually just go to the main part and i can actually change the any of the parameters or the arguments which i'm interested in modifying and i can actually just save and close the file that will automatically will uh, roll it out the new changes which i'm trying to publish here so that's a graphical user interface uh, option as well if you wanted to go forward and you like to use that it also shows you about the charts and the releases if you have any running in your inside your eks cluster so in my case emissary ingress and grafana is running at the moment and now we already have uh, set up the uh, I am rolled and the service account is set up. Now we just need to run the kubectl apply command. So what we're gonna do is similarly uh, run the kubectl apply. And then here I'm just gonna type cluster auto scaler and I will see the, I have a cluster auto scaler auto discovery and here I'm actually applying that. So you can see it's actually creating the cluster order scalar, uh, cluster role. It's creating the role which is binded to the, uh, your cluster role is bind to the cluster role binding and the role bind to the uh, role bind to the role binding. And there is a deployment app. One of the important thing, there is a two important things which I remember right now. Uh, if you open that yaml configuration itself you will see i have committed out the service account because we have created the service account using the ekctl way you don't require to actually create the service account in this way because then you have to modify the code in order to map it up with the armed role policy so that's where that's why we use it on the ekctl i'm service account where the service account map it up to your i'm role that I'm role has the policy attached to it to gives the permission to scale up and down your workload and here you can see the cluster role cluster role binding and the role and the role binding and the deployment itself now one of the other important things to note uh, the cluster auto scaler itself the community and the you can see the open source team always recommend that you should always try to use the Kubernetes version and the CA version match it to the most recent patch they have rolled it out. For example, I'm on Kubernetes version 1.27. But currently, if you go here and if I should go to the cube system and see the cluster order scaler, if it's actually been created here. So if I just type cubes GAPO and I'm actually going to see if a cluster auto scaler is there. No, it does not create it. It might be because I have actually scaled it down last time. Okay. So if I just scale back up. Uh, the reason I was uh, not able to show is us because I have actually did this uh, lab before and I actually scale it down in the past. And that might be one of the reason it's not able to scale it up.
properly so we just need to wait for a moment to see how does it actually able to scale back or not so i'm just going to check from the terminal itself as well so still try to but i can actually modify the deployment itself and i will change the move the hyphen in from here so basically i'm trying to modify the deployment itself and i'm just going to go to the specs and i'm actually going to change the to two do i have to change anywhere else i don't think so it looks fine and good so let me just save that and if everything is fine i will also increase the size it might be the chance the cluster auto scaler does not have a option to scale back up because it's uh, using uh, only one node so let me first see uh, because i only set up one of the work uh, the node group and one the node group has only the capacity of one so what i'm going to do i'm currently before the cluster order scaler able to deploy it successfully i'm actually able to going to scale this up and i'm actually going to set two and i'm going to change here the node group to and provided the node group and i'm actually setting the desired capacity to two and everything's if provided correctly then it will actually add another node and it's saying because i didn't provide it the node max so i have to provide it another parameter which is called node max because currently node max is set to one and that's why it is complaining about that i'm saying set to desire to two but ma i said maximum capacity is one so now if i just type the ekctl get node group under this we will see the max capacity has been moved to two now and the desired capacity will also going to try to set to two but we can see the status is still updating so it's not updated yet let's keep trying to run the same command until we start seeing the reflection of the changes it's still trying to updating so i think it's taking depending upon because i have selected a different instance types like m6r large t3r large t3a extra large m4 large so depending upon where it's trying to and uh, which one it's trying to launch it's actually uh, waiting so i'm just still Oh, it's still taking time which is very astonishing for me as well that uh, sometimes it takes more time than others so once we will start seeing it's updating and all this information to be honest you can also see how does it actually happening uh, from your cloud formation so if you just go to the cloud formation we, because behind the scene the ekctl itself tried to launch the cloud formation templates for you so you can actually see here up itself about anything which is happening. So like for example, right now we created that service account and that service account using this template, which is used to create it. And here we can see the event for anything which is happening, uh, creating process is happening, which I just triggered. So hopefully in few minutes, we will able to see this output will be changed to two because it's updating so now we can see it moves to two uh, previously the max capac capacity was set to one so now it's set to two so and now hopefully our cluster then one of the other node will going to join this eks cluster and then we will able to try it again to and you can see there is a new uh, aws node and the csi node is trying to launch and that will be probably going to for this one and now if i actually i try again to make sure it's able to have enough capacity to deploy it uh, into that cluster we will try again and uh, let's see how does it go uh, to be honest like there is other ways as well where you, what you can use to uh, increase uh, you can set some priority class in order the, to the cluster order scaler to be able to deploy it in your current workload uh, that will also gives you more benefits 
of how you can do things I will also see if it's any HPA or something has been set up to block the workload no it's not so if it does not then what we're gonna do I'm actually able to okay it's complaining about the service account cluster order scaler not able to find oh, okay that makes sense so basically the issue was not with the scaling but with the service account the deployment is looking for a service account in the wrong area so if I just go here and modify my search for service account this is the service account name it's looking for but I actually created the service account with this name so I have to add the demo in the end and if I just deploy it you will see straight away it will start coming up so that was the issue so my bad on that part that I didn't check the error thoroughly what was it complaining about and the issue was about the error itself now it's having another issue if we see if it's a it's having a backfire okay very interesting it's giving the code error okay it might be the possibility that the it's giving the it's still terminating and one of the reason is about the image is actually using the version 1.262 not the latest patch version from the kubernetes it's cluster autoscaler itself which i mentioned if you are on cluster 1.27 then you have to look for the ca version for 1.27 for the better stability so if i just go to the here to the autoscaler and look for the latest patch which is 1.273 and we can see here the kubernetes registry 1.73 and now I can just go to the deployment, modify the deployment and go to the image section and then modify it to 1.273. That's the latest patch uh, being rolled out from them. And if everything's uh, we have done it correctly, then the cluster autoscaler will be stabilized without any further restart or any issues so it's still failing uh, that means there is something else has been uh, not configured properly so it's uh, complaining about the uh, the cluster auto scaler is f getting the forbidden user for your cube systems in the cluster auto scaler demo cannot list the nodes so basically now what I learned from this is like we also need to modify our cluster auto scaler rule binding so for me it's the better option to do that if i open this vs code and actually go to the here and if i look for the cluster auto scaler and the cluster auto scaler cluster auto service account which is demo and uh, service again let's draw auto scaler demo and if i just apply that patch which is in aws uh cluster auto scaler cluster auto scaler uh i'm just modifying that patch so that it can able to uh, modify the service account information for me and that's uh, it was quite expected as well because we modified the service account in a different name like with adding a demo in it and that's what's caused the issue here and it's also a good troubleshooting and we can see now the cluster auto scaler itself uh, it's quite ready and it's not complaining about uh, we can ignore uh, the fail to acquire the lease right now but you will start seeing it's uh, trying to actually looking for is there any nodes to scale it down or not so to start listening and watching on the namespaces uh, and we can see now it is not restarting or failing anymore 
uh, so it's a very important to uh, learn about it like a couple of things like uh, because we modified the service account name with adding a demo in the end I have to go back to the source code and modify the Infor, uh, service account information and that's what was complaining about the cluster order scaler when it's trying to list in the namespaces it does not have the user it does not have the permission uh, which is this uh, in the namespace so that was it's complaining about and that's pretty much it today guys for now we have the cluster order scaler up and running and now you can actually set up your uh, min max capacity on your work and uh, on your managed or unmanaged node groups and the cluster order scaler do the rest of the job for you depending upon your workload to see whether you require to actually need two or ten or hundred worker nodes or not uh, that's pretty much about in it in the cluster order scaler demonstration today itself it was a great fun to find out some of the uh, mind twisting errors which we've seen uh, on the way we progress and it's also a good learning to for you guys to understand about the role and role binding and how does you can actually even try to deploy it in your own custom namespace right now uh, that's it for this demonstration in the upcoming video i'm actually going to show you guys how you can transition from cluster to scalar to the carpenter and why the carpenter is a game changer for us especially in the heavy in a big production workloads where you wanted to have a different instance types to run it your workloads and to optimize your cloud cost as well so we're going to go in more in depth in details on that concept itself and that's it for today if you like this session if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and please let me know in comment section if you have any questions or concerns and then, as you mentioned, all this information which I was actually copying and providing here, it's actually all public. Simply just go to the infra public under the Shermio, which is my own uh, repository where I'm actually providing this information. So you can feel free to modify it, raise a request. I'm happy to collaborate with you guys. And this is my YouTube channel where you can actually find all these other informations for uh, different videos where I'm trying to publish. Thank you so much everyone for uh, keeping your support and if you have any questions please bring it up and i'm happy to answer them thank you bye bye